there. Kristen Stewart. Of course, I became aware of her during the... Uh, Twilight movie. Twilight, yeah. Vampire movies. Love that. And I uh, follow her all the time. Let me, t- let me take a look. Wow, that's you, huh? Wow, I'm so used to seeing you every day when I check every... Hey, good seeing you. Hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. Kristen Stewart. Hi there. That's Robin. I won't introduce you to Fred. No one ever wants to meet him. <laughs> Do you want to meet Fred? You don't want to meet Fred. <laughs> See, I told you, no one likes meeting Fred. It's really weird to meet you because uh, I have to confess, I do look at all your pictures on the Daily Mail every day. Oh, fun. When I follow your life. You're one of those people that I, I look at the paparazzi photos, but you look really annoyed in them. Yeah, yeah. I've been cast as that character in the comic book of whatever the fuck that is. Because you don't you really don't know what to do when somebody's photographing you. I've been, you know, like if I go to L.A. and I come out of a restaurant and they start, you know, shoot my picture. Mm. I feel very awkward. I, I don't want to smile. I understand why you don't smile. I, yeah. I, don't, I just want to act like I don't even know what to act like. <laughs> yeah. It's a very confusing thing. Yeah. I know. It's all, like often fairly arbitrary as well. It's like maybe it was bright or something and I look like this. And then you're like, oh, she looks miserable. It's like, no, I live in L.A. It's like sunny out. I don't know. I, I don't even know. know. I didn't even know that person was there sometimes. You know? I know. It's very unfair. But I, I don't know. You're one of those people I have to look at. I, <laughs> I like when you're going in and out of the gym and you're wearing a crop top. And I like to read what they write and mm. all that other stuff. It's mm. fa- you're fascinating wow. to me. Is, um, cool. is much I, of it true or is it just they make it up as they go along? I feel like typically what's actually, I mean, the actual content is pretty thin. Yeah. I feel like it's like Kristen Stewart flashes her midriff looking sunny yes. or <laughs> looking not. It's like, well, I wonder what that's about. She yeah. looks really tired today. And it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, the stories are yeah, I've created true. A- yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I've created a whole life around you. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's really pathetic. <laughs> it's really weird, but I, I have. Mm. And then I'm like, well, what's going on with Kristen today? Well, <laughs> she's in her crop top showing off her midriff. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and I read these things and it's crazy. But you're not showing off your midriff. You're just being somebody who's trying to live their life. Wearing half a t-shirt. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it's just you being you. Anyway, um, you know, I have to ask you about this before I get into your whole life. When you're when you do a movie with Woody Allen, yeah, and he gives you direction, mm. and he says to you, "Hurry up, um, I'm getting bored. I want you to do this." Fit. Does that blow your mind as an actress, or do you sit there and go, "Well, he's Woody Allen; he must know what he's talking about"? Because I thought good directors aren't supposed to tell you what to do, right? Yeah, everyone's different. I feel like um, in that particular circumstance, I agreed with him, and oh. so it didn't put me off in any way. I wasn't like. Like, I, I know what he means. I know he did, I mean, it definitely wasn't designed to sort of like put me off kilter, even though a lot of people might be sensitive and weird. Actors are very delicate, usually. Um, I'm not. Like, I do want to just service the thing. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I forgot my responsible water bottle. You want a um, water bottle? A responsible yeah. water bottle. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm having a hard time. You won't drink from plastic? Well, I know. Yeah, I mean, I really try not to. That's cool. Uh, you sure? Go ahead. Have some water. You can have it. I, I promise <laughs> I'll recycle it. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm cool. having the same problem. I'm into this weird thing. I'm off meat. I'm off poultry. I won't eat birds, all that kind of stuff, because we mm-hmm. do so much animal rescue. Yeah. You know, my wife and I. Yeah. And then with the plastic bottles, I mean, the whole damn ocean is filled with plastic, but yet I don't trust the water coming out of my sink. So what are you doing? Um, there are these like really cool like filter bottles that apparently make the water all uh, right. You live here. Yeah. I, li- I live... I live feel in like, many places, yes. Right. Yeah. I feel like the tap water, isn't it like classically people are like, you can totally drink the tap water in New York? In it's New good. York, you're supposed to be able to, yeah. I yeah. think it's bullshit. <laughs> I, there's no fucking Howard way. Howard doesn't trust any tap. It is so goddamn <laughs> dirty around here. I can't imagine that the water is clean here and the yeah. old pipes and everything. Makes sense, yeah. And I think so. so it tastes good though. It but, just does. Yeah. And then I recycle the bottles and then I find out from someone, they don't, like after I do the whole separating thing, they say, oh, when it goes down to the dump, they just dump everything all together anyway. Oh. <sighs> That's what they're saying. Yeah, I've heard this as well. Yeah, I yeah. don't know what to do. I have a filter bottle for you. you. I don't, but I don't trust the filter bottle because then I won't clean it enough. <laughs> you just buy a new one when I'm it so, wears out. I'm so fucked up and afraid you know those, of germs. You know those water stores? I used to be like driving around in the valley when I was like a little guy. I was like, what are these? How do these places stay open? You go buy water from a water store. And now I'm like, yes, you go to the water store with a big, huge glass. Thank you so oh, much. What is that? That's your filter water? 
I guess so. What I mean, is that? This probably came from a bottle. <laughs> I don't know what, that is. what do you mean this water stores? How do I not know this? Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like you can get alkaline water, different right. levels of whatever. They and, have those yeah. filters and they have big jugs. Big jugs that you can put yeah. in your own, like, sort of make it cold things. Right. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that where you're going? Water stores? Mm-hmm. What, how, how normal or abnormal is your life now since twilight? I mean, can you... I, it, like, it seems to me that you attract, and you don't seem like a person who wants to attract paparazzi, but it seems to mm. me like where everywhere you go, even working out, mm. how do they even know where the fuck you are? Who Do people just report to on you? Is that what's going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, ugh, it was boring. Like, it's not boring to me. Outside. I don't know how you function. <laughs> I mean, they like just sit outside my house and... Um, there's really like, there's really no getting, there's no getting away. So at some point you just kind of forego the care. Do you have a gate? I live in a, I do live in a small gated community, Smart. but they just sit outside every single exit. I think there are a couple yeah. of us in it. So I think that I'm not the only one they wait for. So we all get kind of screwed. So when you get in your car to drive somewhere, you got people following you. Yes. I would have a fucking car accident. I used to be out of my goddamn mind about it. Yes. And now I'm not. You're not. <laughs> no, you have to just to it. chill. It's not safe. Like, you, you, like, really, you just have to, like, breathe through it and realize that, like, who, those people are not, to me, people. There are sociopaths that we're all very aware of that yes. do not care about other humans. They're, they're imitating people. Those people are imitating people. I can't imagine that they have families. I genuinely don't understand how you do that to people. Be- they're thieves. Yes, because... Because yeah. that's how Princess Diana died. I mean, there, there was a guy chasing her and they, they went crazy trying to avoid this guy. It's disgusting. And that story absolutely turns me inside out and makes me like I could start crying. Thinking about it. That's I, yeah. I, it's I a know. horrible story. It's terrible. It, I, it, it really is. And I think about you because I, I know, you know, on the one hand, you've got to say to yourself, hey, thank God Twilight happened. I can yeah. get any part I want. You know, Not any part you want, but it, it, it definitely ups your um, ability to get great scripts in oh, Hollywood. Yeah. Isn't it, you know, and then, but on the other hand, you're a young girl and especially when Twilight came out, what were you about? 21, two? I was 18. You were 18. Yeah. And the way they're covering your romance with Robert Pattinson and all this, I had him on the show. He was talking about, he said, no relationship could survive the intense scrutiny that we were under. It, it was, was insane. Yeah. It, yeah, it was. I mean, we wanted to like keep it ours. And so it was like this thing of going like, well, do you... Do you live like openly and share your life in a way that actually entitles you to living it sort of more freely and naturally? Or do you like put it on lock because you hate the idea of perpetuating this like commodified version of your something that feels real to you? And you're like, no, I'm not selling you shit. (laughs) And like and then but then you actually deprive yourself of like so many experiences like we didn't walk down the street holding hands because we were like we don't want to give it to him but then we didn't get to walk down the street holding hands. And and the best part. And you're right. Of course, it sucks because the best part of a relationship with anyone is, is screaming walking, from the rooftops. I'm in yeah, love. Yeah. And I'm walking around holding somebody's hand. It is so exciting. I remember when I first met my wife, we'd go out and I just said, you know, just being walking down the street with you is an exciting thing. For oh me. my God. I know that. I know. And, and that takes away the experience. You know, it, it, it truly does. And, you, and, and, it, and it's a, it, there's no lessons you can take on how to handle this stuff. Right. I mean, who do you turn to when your fame becomes so intense? Mm. It's a weird thing because, Bradley Cooper. Now, he's a big star, but I know how Bradley lives. He's on the subway here in New York. Mm. I went out to dinner with him one night. He's walking down the street with me. We're just strolling along. It seems for some reason like he can walk around and not get the kind of attention you get. My theory on this is there's a couple of women in Hollywood who are so attractive and so mesmerizing, like in the Julia Roberts category, you being one of them. That they just, they're consumed with you. I do know for a fact that men get approached in a very different way because they're, uh, I don't know, more intimidating or just, um, there's like a certain, I don't know, I, it's you hard to pick the something. word. There's a respect thing where people go like, oh no, I wouldn't, whereas women are like, we're like, it's like fodder. Like it, for, I, I, um, I mean, I've seen the difference between how people approach men versus I hadn't women. considered that. Yeah. I hadn't considered that. You might be right. No, that you're bigger. Like guys are, they're bigger. They have this, the stature of like, excuse me, I sort of command a certain thing, especially like successful, famous men. Like there's a certain sort of like, you know, I don't know. There's a dominance. They're genuinely dominant and we're not. And so it's like, 
there's just more entitlement. And also it's like, wait, give us what, give us what we want. Like you're a girl. You should be happy to be here. And you should be smiling. It's like, yeah, I know you it's know kind of an old story, but it's like, it's True. like, yeah, you know what? You should be happy. You're famous and everything's perfect in your life. So yeah. therefore you should sit here and pose for us. Yeah. But we've it is, put you here. We own you now. And it's weird too, because then when a guy who they don't normally bother gets into a relationship with a very famous woman, they become a couple. And then suddenly the paparazzi are way more interested in them. Mm. Well, yeah. Stories. People like to, you know, it's Fantasy. storytelling. Yeah, exactly. It's like projection and it is weird. Yeah. And it does seem weird when it, especially when it happens to a girl who's 18 or 19 it and felt wrong. Yeah. It feels like a rape in yeah. the sense that you're Don't whole, say that. <laughs> well, no, well, doesn't it? It doesn't it feel like a complete invasion? I, I'm, I'm not comparing rape to being photographed. No, totally. But I did that but, once because I, I, it was just sort of like this easy word to pull. And then right. you're like, obviously, I do not mean in the, in any remote literal sense. Right. But oh, God forbid you said. Uh, yeah, right. But, yeah, but, which I understand completely. It's like there is nothing. There is absolutely this like incomparable scenario. But. Right. Theoretically, yes, you're stolen from and you're forced. So am I wrong to look at these pictures on the Daily Mail? Should I stop? If no, you tell me to, it. I will. What do, am I, I mean, supposed to do? Don't give them clicks. Or I don't even care. Genuinely, I don't even care. All like, right, I'm going to stop. How do you like that? <laughs> I'm going to do that for you. Great. Pick another <laughs> Great. outlet. I don't know. Yeah, like, I, take, I take pictures willingly all the time. Look at those. I know. I know. <laughs> that, is, that is true. I, um, you know what movie that you did that I'm really fascinated by? The Joan Jett movie. The oh. Runaways thing. What now? Now, when you play Joan Jett versus a character in a movie, that's got to be a weird thing. And the fact that you hung out with Joan Jett is even weirder. Like in a way, it almost if I was an actor, I wouldn't want to hang out with Joan Jett <laughs> because it would intimidate me. And I'd say, oh, how the fuck am I supposed to be this person? Yeah. And then she's going to be looking at you cross eyed because, oh, you're not being like me. Yeah. But the way you prepared for that role is to just hang out with her all day. At night? Yeah. Like like live with her almost 24 hours. She was she was with me the entire shoot. I never there was there was um really never a day that she wasn't there, yeah. Isn't that weird in a way? If you had to do that movie all over again. Mm. Do you want the person you're doing in essence you're doing the story of their life? Do you really want them hanging out with you commenting that doesn't feel real, that feels real, that doesn't? In this case, I would do it again the exact same way because she's so um, she's so intimidating, like staggeringly. So like when you meet her, like, oh my, like she has this armor on that is just like, it's kind of penetrating. She's tough. She's really tough. Yeah. But yeah. then you realize that the reason she is that way is because she is a delicate little angel baby. Like she's, ve she's very, like, it's a self-protective thing because she's super soulful and like sensitive and very she's an artist. attuned. She's such a, yeah, exactly. And so like, so, we really got along really well. So her suit of armor is this tough girl kind of thing. Mm. But if you get to know her and you get under the hood, mm. she's very emotional oh, yeah. and a delicate person. Oh, yeah. No, the reason that she has, the reason she is who she is is not because she's like, yeah, tough. It's because she's like a poet. Yeah. When I hang around people like that, and maybe you even get this rap too, that like uh, people think you're super cool. They think that like with Joan Jett too. Like, oh, she's just a super cool woman. And mm. and you get weird around people like that because you don't know how to be. You feel like you have to be someone other than who you are because mm. they're judging you. You mm. know what I mean? And so playing Joan Jett and hanging around with her all the time, to me would be tough just because I wouldn't want to disappoint her. It was, no, at first it was awful. Like I can't rehearse. I can't commit to rehearsal. I can't show anyone anything before it happens. It just feels like ridiculous until it's like, until it's go time. I just find it to be an absurd act. I get it. And so she was like, we were rehearsing Cherry Bomb and I was kind of like barely half ass like doing it. And she was like, I could see the worry in her face because she doesn't know my process. She hasn't made a bunch of movies. Do you know what right. I mean? So and I was just like, I saw her face kind of fall and genuinely question whether or not this was going to go down. And I was like, oh, like I started crying and like, I was like, I promise it's going to be okay. As soon as we started shooting, it was like, not only did she allow me to kind of live in it and like, she kind of handed her stuff over to me in a way that I didn't have to be exactly like her because right. that would just be, that would suck. That would suck. It that wouldn't would be, be you real. Doing an impression. Exactly. And that wouldn't be real. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's the weird thing. I understand that when you, yeah. when you're pretending before the camera's rolling, you almost want to give it about 30% of your energy. Yeah. Because it feels stupid. It, it's ridiculous. Yeah. 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 And, and then when you get in front of the camera, then you feel like that's my job and I know what I'm going to do. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you can really commit to it and really be swept up in something that kind of is beyond your control. That's why I would be annoyed if Joan Jett was hanging out with me the whole time, because I have to sit there and explain to her how I work, how right. I do it. Did you learn how to play guitar for that? Uh, luckily, I already I started playing guitar when I was on set, like as a little kid. My dad played a lot. And yeah, so but I, there was some other movie you played guitar in, too. I'm trying to think of or something. What was not the movie? What am I thinking of? Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I played guitar in Into the Wild, too. Yeah. Yeah. And you really, but on the Joan Jett movie, are you really playing? We didn't play live. No. No. But yeah. I mean, I knew the songs and we, yeah, we, we pre-recorded them. It was like such a run and gun movie. It was tiny. And, I see. Yeah. What was your favorite movie to do? Was it Twilight? Do you think? I mean, just in terms of the process or was it working with Woody Allen or maybe, what about, I would think maybe with Jodie Foster when you were what? How old? 11? When you worked with Jodie Foster? I turned 11 on that movie, yeah. You were really good in that. You're Thanks. talking about the safe room where you guys yeah. you guys lock yourself in a room. Yeah. And you kind of look like Jodie Foster in that movie. In a weird way, I could believe you were her daughter. Yeah, it felt that way. And it was weird because she was actually cast after I was. Um, we rehearsed with someone else for several weeks and then it fell through and she came on and I was like, oh, this is perfect casting. You look like me. <laughs> I mean, you guys, yeah, yeah, they, yeah she's to like, an 11 year old, uh, hey, they, cool. found, <laughs> they found some lady who looks like me. Yeah. Oh, look, you did a really good job. She's perfect for my mom. <laughs> Were you nervous? Like you had no concept at 11 years old that Jodie Foster was as big a deal as she was, right? I actually, I, um, I thought I had seen Taxi Driver at that age, which is, right. I don't weird. know how that happened. I yeah, also, how does that happen? Well, you know, I was a curious kid. I was the youngest in my family and like there's shit lying around and you consume it. You know what right. I mean? Like yeah. my parents were never super like sheltering. Also, I read, I feel like I read chunks of definitely saw private parts when I was like oh. really little <laughs> and it was like formative. I genuinely was like, I, I remember like the image of like you on the cover. I just fully remember being like, what is that <laughs> like I mean, it was, private parts was in the house as like yeah. a dvd or a video or something and the book and too. the, oh, the yeah, book yeah oh i thought you meant the movie both yeah yeah like i saw the movie on tv i definitely but i remember reading parts of the book too and it was like i really enjoyed it thought it was like i was extremely curious yeah, and so like fucked up. it's so fucked up yeah i know I and know. i was like way too young but at the same time like i turned out fine and but it was super developmental is what i'm saying seriously like it was a thing uh oh you know i'm yeah <laughs> listen super don't blame me if you're seeing a psychiatrist <laughs> you see a shrink to deal with all the fame and to deal with your your stepping out of the house and having people chasing you around all day do you go to see someone i should i think anyone who can afford it should probably be in therapy but i don't Agreed. take that advice i don't know you've never been to a psychiatrist no i've been to like you know i don't know i like i self-help i i like I hmm, I enrich my life and sort of like compartmentalize and consume art and make it. And I love my friends and I have a dog. And when I look into my dog's eyes, I feel like <sighs> but I should probably you, go to therapy. Yes, you're absolutely right. I don't even mean so much therapy. Like, is there someone you can turn to, whether famous or not? Now, we think they'd have to be famous that, that could say to you, listen. I went through this. Mm. This is how you handle it. This is how you handle yourself. Mm. I mean, I know there are PR people who can tell you how to be on TV and there's people who can tell you this and that and the other thing. But I'm, I'm talking about someone who you trust because I would imagine in your stratosphere, there aren't a lot of people you can trust. Yeah. Um, I mean, my publicist has been my publicist since I was uh, like 13. Really? Who's I that? Her name's Ruth. She's here. Ruth? <laughs> yeah. Does she represent other people or are you her only client? She represents, uh, yeah, a lot of other she people. She has a big agency. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but uh, she's like my sister. Like, she's one of my best friends and she's, she's like... Uh, Protective of you? Extremely. And I know for a fact that it's definitely in no way like... It, she, it's not like self-serving and it's not... She definitely doesn't like tell me how to... Be. Be in, in order to get any sort of like pre-designed it, it, it we function from a really natural and like instinctive place that feels super true and so ruth is the person you would turn to and say listen i went to the gym today these guys were out here photographing me then i got in my car and they followed me and i had the worst fucking day because i didn't know what to do and i didn't know how to handle it ruth would yeah. be the one she's the go-to person yeah definitely i mean wow. absolutely yeah or just like you just go oh you call like friends like good friends and just like, you just have to sort of put it out when you were a kid in school and you started acting so young, were kids hostile to you in the sense that, uh, oh, big shot, now you're in, you know, you started out very young. Your mm. parents were in show business. 
uh, um, behind the camera, right? Yeah. Your dad was a set designer, I want to say? Stage manager. Stage manager. And what was your mom doing? Uh, she was a script supervisor. Right. So in a way, it's weird. Like my dad was in radio. Mm-hmm. And when I'd see other guys in radio, I go, that's what I want to do. But it made me think I'll never be able to do that because they're so accomplished and they're so, they're so magnificent. Yeah. I remember, I remember that in, in the, in, in private parts. I remember it, it freaked me out. So like, I can you, completely relate to that feeling of looking up to your parents and sort of like what they do as a, as a complete, like as, as an ideal, as an aspirational, like, God, I want to do that. You were excited by yeah. what they did. Extremely. They would come home smelling like they had just been out in the world, like really like just had been like traversing crazy distances in order to like achieve a story thing. And they're like part of a circus and they come home with like, you know, mini candy bars in their pockets and like a script bag and they don't come home for 16 hours and they leave eight hours later. Like to me, I, it was intoxicating. It was sick. I loved it. I was like, all I want. And they would bring you to the set. Yeah. Yeah. And you would look at this and just, I've got to be an actor. Yeah, when I was little, I wasn't like a, I didn't I wasn't like really keen on performing. I just wanted to be on the crew. I right. I deglorified that job in order to sort of be a part of like a blue call. I was like, yeah, I mean, we're glorified liars. You know, we're just like we're we're like really good at pretending, but we're just another member of the crew. And then I got a little older and I started really like understanding how you could be like fulfilled as an artist in that way and how it is somewhat different at times to just having a more sort of technical job and I was like now and then i became like a more sort of pretentious like <laughs> so you never trained as an actress like did you did you have formal training when you mm-hmm. were a little kid you were doing it just kind of like by feeling it yeah that's weird to me like you could go in into a commercial audition i guess you do commercials at first and you do little walk-ons where you don't uh, say anything i didn't ever get any of those i only ever got one commercial really yeah what was the commercial porsche Oh, no kidding. It's pretty cool. Did you, yeah. Was it cool? <laughs> yeah, it was sick. It was really cool. Did you get to speak? Yeah. Was it hard for you to learn how to memorize lines and to compose yourself? I mean, I, I remember. I was very shy and nervous, but no, I could remember lines like, yeah. Because when I first got on the radio, I was a fucking mess. I mean, yeah. there was just nobody banking on me. I can't yeah. imagine at that young an age to be poised enough to be in a Porsche commercial. I, I was not poised. Not in any sense. Like I was like literally like thrown out of any like typical commercial or like Disney like type of like kid stuff like right. little kid shows or never not even close. The first movie I did was called The Safety of Objects and it was like dark and bizarre and sort of heady. Didn't you do something for Disney? Didn't you once have some kind of interaction with Disney or did you audition for Disney and, and that kind of thing? No. Never? On, I mean, maybe I auditioned when I was younger for some Disney stuff. But, but you had but a lot I of rejection. Got it. Oh my God. Yeah. I auditioned for, I auditioned for like a year and a half and didn't get anything. And was also like, it, it's a, it's a demoralizing and brutalizing process going in as a little kid and having all these like girls be like, ding, ding, and they're, they're, they fit the, <laughs> yeah. they're like bouncing around and dancing and they're fully able to somehow, um, f- not feel shame. And yeah. I was just like drenched in it. And then I found my people, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. you're self-conscious when you're a little kid too. Oh my God. Yeah. No, yeah. I was like a mess. Yeah. When you uh, sang the dreidel song at a school holiday show, are you Jewish? So I did twenty three and Me, and I am I'm twenty four percent Ashkenazi Jew. Oh, you are. My mom was adopted, so we just didn't know. You don't know what you are. But she was adopted by Ben and Norma Ehrman in Van Nuys, California, in nineteen fifty three. So I was like, Mom, I'm pretty sure that they probably would have, at that stage, adopted a fellow Jew. And right. I could be wrong about that, maybe not. But I feel like I feel like back in the day, people were quite, I don't know. Huh. Anyway, it's on her side and I'm thrilled and like now I'm, you know. You were at school, you sang the dreidel song and an agent saw something in you and decided that he would represent you? Is that how it goes? Yeah, it was more like kind of a cattle call situation. Like some, someone's oh. mom worked at a thing where it was like, come buy headshots and like a few uh, audition classes to learn how to like put yourself on tape or go give your like name and slate. Right. And my mom was like, do you want that? And she definitely didn't think that I was going to say yes. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. Want, I definitely want to do that. And she was shocked because I was like, I was like. Super shy. Yeah, extremely. Yeah, I get yeah. that vibe from you for some reason. I feel like you're a very private, very shy person. And then yet you're able to go on and act. When you go to a party. I'm not maybe anymore. Yeah, no, but I'm like definitely not like a. 
When you go to, if I saw you at a party in Hollywood, would you be sitting in the corner somewhere, kind of like uh, just the, the too intimidated by everyone to really speak up, or would you would you be having a conversation with people? Oh, I talk to people. You do? <laughs> yeah. Depends on how fucked up I am. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, weed, you went to, you, well, you live in California. Weed's legal. You like weed? Yeah, I do. The first time I ever um, was photographed after the Twilight thing happened, uh, <laughs> yeah. my I was on my front porch with my first, my like high school boyfriend and my dog and I was hitting a pipe. <laughs> and then like his family who lived in Staten Island that were far uh, less you know, accepting of stuff like this than my fucked up hippie parents from Cal- <laughs> from LA. Right. Um, were like, you guys are on your front porch smoking pot. And I was like, what? <laughs> well, how do you know that? Oh my God. And it was like in the post. It was like the first thing. And then Ruth was my, my girl, my publicist was yeah. like, maybe take it inside from now on. I mean, I think things are like changing rapidly. Ruth is <laughs> yeah. right though. You know, it's a weird thing with Hollywood with, yeah. with, with pot. When you see that picture, I mean, everybody's smoking pot and yet, in Hollywood, they're so afraid of addiction and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't want to like perpetuate that yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it, but it, it's weird because um, very well adjusted. It's all good. I can smoke weed. It's no biggie. Yeah, it's no biggie. But yeah. people probably because you're a leading lady, people are constantly probably telling you what to do and what not to do to not affect your career. Um. Yes and no. Yeah. I think I can kind of feel it in a in a sort of like um undefined way. I mean, a, cu- a couple of times I've had like a few conversations that rub me the wrong way, but like typically people around me are really supportive and, and loving. People say don't be photographed with a girlfriend. People do say don't be photographed with uh, weed or something. Don't that was sort of up. a conversation that happened like a number of years ago and it never, I kind of never got over it. Right. Um, and then I, and then in this rapidly developing and, and progressing time, it became absurd. And I was like, that was only three years ago. Uh, I I used to have conversations where people would be like, if you don't want to talk about it and you don't want to define yourself, then you need to stop setting yourself up for that by going out and whatever. And it was just like, well, here's the thing. Now that question is, it's a ridiculous and ignorant question. And it's a sort of like violent, like, okay, my, yes, my, my, my well, a friend of mine has a kid and she was like, Hey, um, I asked my kid if he was like gay, but it was like in like the nicest, like sort of most, I was just curious. I just want to know him. I just want to be as close to him as I possibly can. And he's really young and he uh, is really self-possessed and very clearly already feels comfortable in a way that feels fluid and cool and kind of like you don't know where it's going to go. And he was like, this is child abuse. And I was like, it's true. <laughs> it's like, you know, on some level, the, the, the sort of fervent question that was demanded of me for so long is now ridiculous. That's true. It, 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 it's it's a non-starter. But it's, that's a Hollywood thing. I remember the days. You know, Rock Hudson was a gay man. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of guys in Hollywood who were leading men who were gay. It was pretty well known. Mm. But if the p- general public found out, you were fucked. Right. No one could accept you in a heterosexual role. It just was weird. Mm-hmm. Like you're an actor, you're pretending to be something. What's the difference? But yet society hadn't gotten there. Yeah. So I could picture in your life, you got a couple of people in Hollywood who say, listen, you got a great career. You want to continue to have a great career. Don't fuck up. And Make stop it easier being, on yourself. Yeah, don't yeah, be yeah. photographed with a, with a woman. Sure. And that conversation did happen to you. And I always said, I, I would love to ask you about that because fuck it. I mean, I, mean, I like someone, what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be okay. It's just got to be okay to be whatever the fuck you are. I am so coincidentally lucky to be like living in in this time and i look at literally just like kids people five years 10 more like people people five years younger than me have it so much easier than i did three years ago like when it was just like it was just this ridiculous people change every day there is no reason why anyone needs to like provide an easy narrative for other people to digest it's like there's no why it, it, why would I simplify something very complex just in order for you to feel comf- more comfy? It's I, like, no, nah, I, I, I don't actually, want to diminish this like cool thing, which is like discovering yourself and your sexuality and like how that changes. Like, w- w- yeah. I why would you box that you up? This. Yeah. I actually really do admire your courage Thanks. because I'm old enough to remember how horrible it was when people would come out. And yeah. especially in Hollywood. Oh man. And Violent. The, way, the way you're living your life, 
is a, a beautiful example. You were like, hey, fuck it. I, yeah, I'm coming off Twilight. I can, I can do movies. I can do this. But I'm not going to sit. I, I enjoy holding the person I love's hand in public. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. And your life would suck if you didn't do that. And I admire your courage for doing it because I think a lot of people would have said, shit, I don't want to fuck up my career. Yeah, totally. And what's cool is I'm really lucky. I was never, I never was in the closet. Like, never. you know, me and Rob never, we like really kind of kept our, our stuff like on lock, which was really painful, but it was never, I never was like, I never felt like ashamed of, I, I never felt, sh I, I luckily, I was raised by loving parents that were fully accepting and whatever, but like I Your never. Your parents are something else. Huh. Didn't they, they took in strays, right? I mean, they, when I say strays, I mean it, it, it in the sense that if a kid was having trouble in his family or just wasn't getting along at home, your parents would let other kids live in the house. Yeah. That's I mean, very unusual. Yeah. My best friend had a, a really rough um, upbringing and just didn't have really any options. And I was like, he has to be here. I mean, that's, there's, and you no, go to your there's parents nothing else. Yeah. And they say, okay. Yeah. And they even did that with some of their friends. Like were, they were very. Uh, my mother would never allow that. <laughs> yeah. She would not. Because you know what? My mother would have gone and consulted and said, you know, in a way, bringing a kid into your house can be really hard on you, too, because mm. you want attention and you want the love of your parents. Yeah. In a way, maybe maybe sometimes a kid shouldn't be allowed in your house. But your parents seem to have a really open attitude. Yeah. These were like kind of dire situations. And then, yeah, we were just kind of a, a, like a communal. What's it like? What, what, are the, what did the kid's parents say when your parents are now keeping their kid in their house? I mean. My best friend's mom and dad both died from drugs. Oh, so they had They've nowhere to go. They both passed away. Yeah, and then and then his grandparents subsequently were just like, not. Yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a feasible sitch. And so that kid would have been in the system. He, uh, absolutely. If it wasn't for your parents. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, they're pretty yeah. heroic too. Yeah, yeah. Who would take on the burden of another kid? Uh, not too many people. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I have that too. Like, I I feel like um, my in a in a much less sort of dramatic. Uh, dire way i i have all my friends like we have a very tight-knit thing like i do feel like i kind of have this umbrella thing going on that i've got like a certain number of people under and i think i got that from my parents it's a nice way to live like a communal sort of lifestyle is great. Well, what's it like uh having a best friend who's both their parents both both this person's parents die from drug overdoses mm. and now they're living in your house there had to be tremendous sadness brought into that house yeah he was going through a lot yeah yeah and i mean yeah. it, that had a way on you i mean that had to be a heavy emotional burden no um it, it, to be honest like fully like you know uh to, yeah he, he yeah i mean like I, I wish that it didn't still follow him there's no way that that's not like a shaping and kind of oh, devastating God. thing yeah. yeah i feel bad i yeah i still feel terribly for him but why did you drop out of school and uh, get homeschooled in seventh grade were you because school is miserable and it, scary i wish i could have, it <laughs> I sure <know>. is <laughs> it's terrible but i couldn't I, I wouldn't have had that option who, i know I, I mean who so lucky you really are lucky i know seventh oh, grade, why was school horrible for you in seventh grade was it because you were acting with the kids like kind of singling you out and saying oh who do you think you are big shot is that were they trying to shame you for uh, acting at that stage, I hadn't done anything like very big. Panic Room was like kind of an adult movie and right. it was a couple of years since then. Time is What was the problem to then? Kids. What was going on in seventh, sixth grade, fifth grade? What was going on that made you feel so uncomfortable? I think just the age. I just think, God, like I was not somebody who, um, like I had my friends, I think because I was like gone and then back, it was hard to sort of, Oh. You know, it was hard to like fall in. Right. When it was so staggered. Um, I didn't have my friend group. I changed schools. It was like sort of, I went to this one school in a really nice area and I was like not wearing the jeans. I was like such a weird little like self conscious, like pimply, scuzzy, gross. You know when you just feel fucking gross? Yes. That. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't look at me. You think I felt <laughs> gross? What are you kidding? Of course. <laughs> Do I know? Oh, man. Like, no matter how many times you shower, you're just like, I hate this. Oh, my God. You see, like, I, I see you as so, uh, you know, physically beautiful that I figured you went to school and you were the prom queen. Oh, like, no. I, I really figured you just had it easy because of your beauty. And I always Thank think you. people who are good looking, 
get that advantage at school. Like, like you should see, on, no, my seventh grade pictures are, are really, there. oh man. Yeah. Not, not but, cute. But I see you as this cute kid in panic room with Jody Foster when you were 11. So I just figured the world is your right. Like, mm-hmm. like my wife modeled it. She talks about school. The principal was worried about her every minute. You know, yeah. my principal didn't know my name. So it's it's very surprising to me that you would have a bad time in school. I was like really bad at math, but really great at other stuff. Like right. I couldn't get to my, ultimately the reason I stopped going to school is because my teachers actually resented the workload that I provided them because they would have to like, I was in public school. And so they I had see. to like put packages of work together so I could leave. And then I would come back and they were like giving me like low C's when I was working my balls off. And then like, like I failed a class and I was like, okay, I, I, I actually have to drop out yes. and do independent study. And I was able to like design my curriculum and it was really cool. And it was like, uh, educationally speaking, it was so much better because I could focus and I actually liked it. When I went to school, I was in like full on special ed math because I just, my brain doesn't work like that. And then I was in like AP English and they're so far from each other in the school. I would be like running to my last period and I would get in trouble every day for not making it. And I was like, it is physically impossible for me to get here. You don't understand. And then like, I wasn't the type of kid who could speak up for myself then. So I would just be like late and in trouble. And I'd be like, (laughs) somebody help me. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And then you're like, maybe if you tell your parents, they can help you, but you don't do that when you're a kid. You I'm gonna don't. be like, why yeah. is that? I don't know. You're why an don't idiot. your parents? Stupid. I know, but you blame yourself. But there's something there that you just want to be a hero and be a martyr and, and yeah. act like you take on fine. so much as a kid. If I ever have a kiddo, I'm gonna be like every day. I'm gonna be like, what's going on? Tell me everything. What happened at school? Nothing. You liar. Like, come <laughs> on. I can help you. Trust me. Like, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's 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 weird. Your you, you, your whole life is is kind of interesting to me because to start that young and you've said like, you never got to go to college, right? Do you regret any of that? Do you, do you, um, do you say, gee, wonder what that would have been like, what I could have learned academically. Maybe it would have been kind of a fun time. No, I have this a massive chip on my shoulder about that. For you sure. Do. Yeah. Because I know in Hollywood, there's a lot of people who kind of lay out what they've read, um, oh, what yeah. they know. There's a lot of actors that. need to tell you, how well researched they are that I basically, I am an autodidact. Like, it's just like, yeah, for sure. But also you could just be an actor and that would be cool too. Yeah, that would be fine. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, but when, same. I'm always telling people about like all the shit that I know because I'm like. Wh- yeah. So when you started with Twilight, which is a defining moment, mm. you said that was like your college education. And I, I don't think it's the education. No, I think it was, it was the experience. social. Yeah, yeah, it was like hanging yeah. out with all those kids. Yeah, that was like the period of time where I was like, you know, drinking too much beer and like rolling to class, like, you know, cross-eyed. Was it so much fun in the camaraderie? I mean, not only were you falling in love with Rob on the set, which by the way, I think is the biggest mistake an actor can make. Falling there was nothing I could do. <laughs> yeah. you, it was just, it was just, the director mm. was even nervous because mm. the first time you guys kind of, they auditioned you together or you, you would already had the part. But they ha- they put you together to see the chemistry. Mm. There was immediate chemistry between the two of you. Yeah, yeah. It was it's pretty weird. Obvious. It's so weird. Like, t- like actually being honest about this is like it's been so heavily consumed, and it's like I have this fear that people would assume that maybe I'm like you know it's kind of attention. Like, oh, cool. You're still like pushing that narrative or whatever. It's like no, I've actually never been allowed to just say what happened right. because I was so self conscious about seeing like an attention seeker, like somebody who was like taking, trying to or taking advantage yeah, of, exactly. of the fact that you guys were dating and yeah. stuff. People, I mean, I, I, we were together for years. That was like my first, you, you know, I, love. Yeah. I mean, like I, I was super in love with my high school boyfriend, super, super fucking in love with him. But me and Rob were like a little older and it was just like, go gong. Um, but, uh, he's a charming guy. I yeah, mean, he's I, the, he's I the best. met, he's, he's really, he's the best. And you know, the, the, that movie, especially the first one, the way you played it, and maybe, it, it, you know, it was just perfect. I love scenarios where this Superman, the vampire, is Superman, and this woman now is finally realizing that he has superpowers, and you couldn't have played it better. 
Oh, thanks. Like you played it perfectly. Like you, you just were like, oh my God, I want him to bite me. I don't care if he fucking kills me. I just can't let get enough of this guy. And the scene that I watch over and over again from that movie is <laughs> the, try hard. Wait, <laughs> yes, I am. The, the first scene where he um, pushes the, the car so that you don't die, so that you don't get hit by a car and you realize this guy's got super strength. Uh, you just uh, played it right. Uh, uh, that like sound. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's fuck. And then when he takes you out into the woods and you, you know, and he, he comes to your bedroom, he's, you're jumping out the window with him, you're holding on to him. Yeah. Fucking amazingly fucking romantic. That's what it? it feels like. I mean, that's like when you're a kid. That's yeah. Yeah. That's totally what it feels like. Even though, I mean, like I was super aware that we were doing like a teen movie and I had never done that before. I'd done like very over serious kind of like dramas pretty much my whole life. And then then this, I was like, I wanted to do like a culty, weird, indulgent, just like full blown, you know, I don't, I, it's weird to use the word girly now for anything because I don't even know what that means. Are we talking about what is that? Like, no, I don't know. it is a girly role. But it, it is it, the traditional. And it it's feel, the Julia and it felt Roberts. Amazing. Yes, it's Julia yeah, Roberts and yeah. Pretty Woman when she you know sees Richard Gere's superpowers. It's Lois Lane mm. it, well, seeing Superman. Mm. It is a girly. It's a traditional Hollywood girly role. Yeah, but it's also like a Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, hundred percent. But because it's so girly, yeah, which is amazing. That's yeah. why it's even more brave that you came out with your life and d- lived. Your your life authentically because people yeah. want to see you over and over again as that that romantic girly role mm-hmm. i think you know there's yeah. a there's a temptation to keep falling into the same part sure but like i have that in there too you know what i mean i yeah. think um i'm about to do the uh like I'm about to do like a gay christmas movie that's a studio film and uh wow yeah, it's, 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 who's doing that? What studio? Uh, I think we're at Sony. I'm, Sony? Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> and you know what's cool? I actually couldn't tell you. That's I, I'm cool. When you reach a level like, where you don't know what studio, I don't know what you're studio it is. I'm yeah. like Clea Duvall right now. Like my, my friend Clea who wrote and is directing this movie is probably like, Kristen, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> yeah. What is a gay Christmas movie though? The fact that any studio backs that though now is just yes. such a cool thing. Um, well, there's a big audience for that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of gay people. Yeah. And, uh, and always and there have always been, yeah. What is a gay Christmas movie? In other words, it's it's following a couple that's gay in the movie? Yeah, it's it's like a a couple goes back home for Christmas and it's uh they're kind of trying to traverse um the family. One of them coming out. Oh. Uh, like basically my character goes home with her girlfriend she wants to propose and she gets there and she's like uh by the way, they don't know I'm gay, but thank you so much for coming. And I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what? And it, and it just sort of like goes like downhill from there. Um, I have still friends who are gay who will not come out. Yeah. That's it's not, so it's, sad. you know, everyone thinks, oh, everyone who's gay comes out. I know I could name 20 people who are gay that will not come out. Yeah. That's They're just sad. afraid. They just don't want to deal with the shit. They just don't. Yeah. So a gay Christmas movie is a great idea. The thing is, they don't have to deal with the shit if they don't want to. Just ignore it. Yeah, they don't see it that way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they, trust me, I get it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, you, you don't have to. You literally just, like, it's like if you, you know, you can look at all the shit in the world or you can look at the beautiful things. It's sort of like you have to, like, kind of take take those in. You have to, like, dose yourself with, I mean, that's an individualized experience. But all I'm saying is it's not that bad. <laughs> like, don't surround yourself with that bullshit and then you don't have to focus on it. Yeah, I know. And and you've certainly lived your life that way. So I, yeah. I, I believe you when you say it. It's yeah. just, it's, for them, it it's just hard seems to believe, overwhelming. But it is hard to believe. Yeah, but you yeah. just do it and then yeah. and, and you deal with it. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, Getting back to Twilight, though. Yeah, let's so do this it. Whole thing is explo- so this whole thing is exploding because at first when you're shooting it, you, you don't know that that's going to be a monstrous movie that grossed no. hundreds of billions of dollars and Not stuff, right? You don't know. No, it was an independent movie. Like, it was, we were, I mean, it was like kind of like an indie movie. I mean, we, what we were with Summit Entertainment at the time, and it was like, and you it get, was small. And you get that part because you had worked for Sean Penn, right? Sean Penn really liked you as an actress, as a young actress. Mm. I think this is, tell me if I got this right. And you were recommended to the director of Twilight. Is that the way it worked at Sean Penn's recommendation or do I have it wrong? I'm not sure. I think maybe they were, yeah, they know each other. I can't remember if I'm being honest. Yeah. Sean Penn, good director? Oh my God, yeah. Why? Why is he a good director? I don't know, because you just do any, it just feels unhinged. It feels like, you know, protected and controlled yet sprawling. And my favorite types of directors make me feel like, anything could happen and we're on like some sort of like holy path 
what a strange thing to be so young and working for like these adults mm. and these adults are telling you what to do. Your parents must have been nervous about all of that because they don't know Sean Penn from a hole in the wall and you're suddenly like, now he's your guru. And yeah, I'm just thinking it, it's a weird thing. Yeah, but they revere filmmaking. And also my mom was with me all the time. They were really protective. Like she was, she always like joked around. She's like, I can't believe you forced me to become the evil stage mom that we all like sort of <laughs> notice on set and, and cringe at. And now she's on set being like, that's it. She's going, there's no overtime. And I'm like, I want to stay. And she's like, shut up. Maybe because you were a kid. Did, I don't know if you did or not, but did you ever experience any of these me too kind of moments that we read about? Nope. Because maybe because you were a kid and your parents were with you, you've kind of been protected that way. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I've been lucky. gotten so lucky. Yeah. yeah. I've never, ever been made to feel like, I don't know. I was like, as shy as I was as a little kid, if anyone ever, I just don't think that I, this is a slippery slope because nobody has ever brought this upon themselves. I just genuinely think like, I just seemed like someone you didn't want to do that to. I would have been mm. like, what the fuck? Like I, I had like such a potty mouth as a kid. I was like so direct and like, I only got self-conscious as, as I like became a teenager. And then I like, finally I'm getting back <laughs> now. Getting older is great. You become like, you like, like you were when you're a kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I've gotten so lucky. I've, I've worked with really, really, I've, I've seen people do it to other people on set. And it's like made me kind of in, like enraged. Like I've seen crew like line producers like people like dps like like making stand-ins do weird shit putting their arms around them and stuff I, I would literally i sit on set and i'm like she probably doesn't want you touching her i'm just saying right and then everyone's like whoa i'm like yeah i mean what like call it out like you're being a weirdo stop good yeah I mean, my makeup artist was dealing with this fucking asshole once and i was just like i, I literally every day on set i'd be like here it comes. Nobody feels comfortable. And he was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're calling me out. I was like, yeah, I mean, stop it. Like, These guys do not see themselves at all. <laughs> they're, they're almost not even wicked people. They're just completely just, stupid. Dude, they're just shaped by all of the reasons why, you know, like white male privilege is a thing. And they're like, what? Uh, you're so lucky. That you, yeah. I, I don't know a woman that hasn't been molested or I mean, it's an epidemic who hasn't been molested or raped it's just unbelievable how many women i meet that have had this experience i know yeah it's pretty crazy getting back to twilight though so this thing this script comes <laughs> to you the, this is fun it's like a, becoming a bit no 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 it's not a bit because I'm, I'm fascinated about this yeah. I, I love the moment where things get out of control in other words you're doing a little movie you've worked with jodie foster in panic room you worked for sean penn this and that you get this role and you get it pretty easily because people had seen your work as a kid. I auditioned so, for Twilight, too, like pretty heavily. Oh, you did? Yeah. The only person I ever heard who was up against you was Jennifer Lawrence. You ever hear that story? I think everyone kind of auditioned for that movie. And at the time, it wasn't even like a coveted... It, 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 because nobody knew it was going to be such a, a big thing. It was sort of like everyone you get a part in. or you don't. You know right. what I mean? Like it, it, at that time... I mean, look, I could be wrong. Maybe there were a few girls that had read the book and like wanted it. I hadn't even read the book when I started making the movie. I see. Were there movies that you really wanted that you never got, like that you went in for? And when you experienced rejection, like were there movies that you just said, I got to get this fucking role and you didn't get it? Yeah, one? for sure. But I can't think of what they are because I had such a like, let's like, let's like, real like be honest about ego here. If I didn't get a part. Right. I would literally be like, oh, my goodness. Um. I was totally wrong. You're an idiot. Uh, you're going to make a movie that is not the movie that I wanted to do because the movie that I wanted to do, I'm in. <laughs> so like way, you, <laughs> like, that's true. And, yeah. and when I, when I'm I, like, wow, dodged a bullet there. Speaking of movies you didn't want to yeah. be in, Rob, when he was here, told me with Twilight that they wanted to go on a whole other direction. They wanted you to be smiley and him to be smiley mm -hmm. and be lovable little, uh, like a, he's be a lovable little vampire. And he said it was tremendous pressure to act that movie the way he wanted to. Yeah, like, he was honestly like, thank God he did have that. Like, I mean, he like, he wouldn't do it the other way. And I don't think he even had that in his wheelhouse. Like his body wouldn't do that. And uh, I mean mine either i was so overwrought and like i was like the only reason this is good is because it's like Ugh! and they were like no but it's not fun and we took a lot of slack like we were constantly being like reprimanded and thank god we like sucked to our guns because that's why the movie works
Yes. Well, yeah. you, yes, that's exactly why the movie works. Yeah. Your two characters really played it well. Yeah. And I can't imagine the I'm pressure. like, yes, exactly. Well, no, no it's I, true. Like, if you were this smiling, way, yeah. kind of not brooding teen, it not, <laughs> yeah. it, I would not have liked the character. I wouldn't have bought it. That's yeah. why I said it was Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. yeah. It's two there was some tragedy. Characters. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, it really worked. And, 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 uh, you know, the I can't believe I'm like looking at you and talking to you about it. It's like very <laughs> trippy to be here. <laughs> looking at Rob. Just, every day I say to myself, I can't believe he's, I'm looking at Rob. Yeah. Yeah. I believe me, All I trip the time. Out. <laughs> very trippy. Um, but, but let me, let me just finish this thought. Of course. Yeah, okay. The, the thought being that, uh, oh, yeah, the audition. Rob comes in, you go to the director's house. And you're on the director's bed. Oh, it was really weird. This is what I'm talking yeah, about. This yeah. might be the closest you came to a meet tomorrow. When, yeah. when you get a call to go to the director's was, house and be making, not, I don't know if you're making out, but if you're rolling around on a bed with, with Robert, mm. it, that's a weird, who auditions in a director's house? No, it's, that, it's almost supremely fucked up. Yeah. It, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you have weird feelings about it? No, I was so into it. Oh, I'm kind were. of fucked up. Yeah. God, you were <laughs> yeah. so into it. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Dude, uh, making movies is a very occasionally um I have had like real experiences and 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 um I I retain memories that feel like they're part of my parts of my life that actually occurred while filming movies. Like acting is not for me when it's bad, you're lying and you're pretending and when it's good, you're like going through something. And um, so, yeah, we set ourselves up for very strange experiences. So can you go watch any of your old films and or is it too emotional for you? Because Depends on which one. But, yeah, sometimes they're very triggering. Yeah, yeah. Like, would you go back and watch the first Twilight just to reminisce and say, hmm, this was, you know, this reminds me of a time in my life that was pleasant? Yeah. I mean, I've seen parts of it like it'll be on TV or like, oh, man. Um, yes, I've I've seen it since. And like. It's such a weird movie. It's like so it's so particularly itself and then like kind of culty because it it's it is it's so clunky. Right. It has a spirit, but it's like what the fuck Jesus. Like it's it's hard to watch yourself at 17. It's like a very, you know. Do you do you would you time. recommend to other young actresses that they fall in love during their movie or should they avoid it? Because that's my point. Uh, you say you couldn't have stopped yourself. I mean, I, I you were in love with Rob. I was going to say, I don't think it's really a choice. Yeah, I, But isn't it dangerous because the set is such an aphrodisiac. It's like a... Maybe it's not real. It's not real. Yeah, but, then, but then you could apply that to any other... What is? What is real? Yeah. Because they cater to you. They're treating you like you're a star. Mm, they're, no. No? No. It wasn't like <laughs> not that? Not at all. <laughs> Get your ass shitty. to set and start smiling, bitch. And I'm like, right. nope. <laughs> 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 But, but but did you have a sense that you were in trouble now that you were in love because you're like, oh, this is cliched. I'm falling in love with my I co-star. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I was so proud of it. And I was like, we're like rock stars, dude. We're like, the, like, I was like, yeah, you wish that you had this. But like, you it, know when you just have that thing and you're like, yeah. this is the coolest. Well, it's cool, too, because you're really trapped in like high school, like you say, yeah. or college. And at least you have you have this great outside romance going on at the yeah. time. It was fun. But it's always doomed, isn't it? Because it, it's just too much pressure when you got as famous as you did so quickly. Talk about the financial aspect. Okay. You go from being, I guess you were a comfortable kid growing up in terms of money. It wasn't like money yeah. was a huge issue, but still you no, weren't wealthy. Were. Your parents were OK. Yeah, we were OK. We, we lived like at the at the base of Topanga Canyon in Woodland Hills. Like it was not very, a very nice upbringing, but it wasn't like, I didn't like my brother went to Calabasas high school and we would like go into those neighborhoods and be like, Jesus, like you get lost in a house or like, right. Yeah. That we didn't, I mean, you know, I rode my bike to school. I always went to like public school, like, you know, yeah, yeah pretty normal, normal life, but very then, suburban, normal lifestyle. Yeah. When money starts rolling in a, I mean, you've never been around, you're a kid mm. and all of a sudden you have financial freedom <laughs> I got to feel like this is mind blowing and sort of liberate, like incredibly liberating because on all of those subsequent movies, you're getting a percentage of the gross. They couldn't have made those movies without you. They mm -hmm. couldn't go ahead if you, you know, you could have gotten whatever you wanted financially because you were the movie, mm -hmm. you know, you and Rob were the movie. Do, do you know what you're doing at first or do you go fucking crazy and start buying everything in sight? Um, no, I have a, I have like very sort of like menial um, what do I spend my money on? Like food, like I have, I'm into you got real a big estate. house. I have a house in LA that's, I'm never going to move out of. It's perfect for me. Yeah. Um, and we're concerned about LA burning down, right? I mean, uh, Los Angeles, California, everything. I mean, it's on fire out there. <laughs> I know. I just was out there. I never go out there, but it, it smelled like fire. I know. 
It's, it's freaky. a real bummer. I'm so sorry for people that are. Like, but but you love your. That that's the house you bought with that money. That's what you did. You bought a house. I bought a house. Do people start hitting you up for money? Does your life change that way that people start yeah. to say, "Oh, you're rich. Come on." Yeah, I, I mean, not like, "Hey, you're rich. Come on," but it's sort of like I, I have like dependents, but I don't mind that. I like I, I, I don't feel taken advantage of. You're grateful that you can do that. Yes, very. So that brings us to Charlie's Angels, which you're out promoting, right? Mm -hmm. Charlie's Angels. Yeah. You didn't watch the old TV shows? No. I think, why Why not though? Is it because it was too goofy or or you just don't want to fall into the trap of pretending or acting like those people? You want to bring something new to it? No, I mean, I kind of like familiarized myself. I think I like watched a few minutes of, like, it's just from a different time and i totally you you can watch one episode and get the gist of what they're doing right you know what i mean so i didn't i didn't i didn't commit to like a season i would think that's fun as an actor to be in a charlie's angels movie so fun right because you get to yeah. shoot everybody you get to kill Buy people you get all everything. that yeah 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 we get to kill the bad guys yeah it's yeah. awesome when is it coming out it's coming let's see i got that information november 15th and theaters everywhere whenever that is when is november 15th couple of weeks couple of weeks mm. and promoting a movie like that you just did saturday night live mm -hmm. we like doing that we we do that. <laughs> um, you don't like doing it. <laughs> uh, I it's weird. Okay, so like, I, I sometimes sometimes you just sometimes it's just mood oriented. Like if you're if you wake up and you actually just don't have like the. I'm a people person. I love people. I love talking to everyone, whatever. But if um, there is there is a sort of ceiling that when you hit it, it starts to feel so absurd. And you're like, oh, man, I can't talk about this thing anymore. Because it's also the most important thing in my life is like my work is like so personal and it's not work. There's no separation between like my. I'm not I don't it's not I'm not professional. It's I'm very like feeling like I never have to be like, OK, I'm at work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to like really. I'm going to put on my game face and be a pro. It's like, no, I never want that. I want to be really available and really present and never trying to put anything on. So sometimes it's <laughs> gouging out. Sometimes it literally feels like someone's gouging out your insides and you're like, get the fuck away from me. Wait a second. You're but then sometimes it feels amazing. You talk about acting. No, I'm talking about promotion. promoting night live or promoting. You what never got promoting? in your career. Promoting. You never got promotion. In fact, when you were in that movie with Jodie Foster and you're 11 years old and then they tell you after you shoot the movie and you love the whole experience. Mm. When you went out to promote that movie, you were, you were even as 11 year old. I don't understand. What, what, what am I doing? Oh, I couldn't even handle. I literally like doing interviews. I like was just why because shaky. you don't want to be judged. Yeah, for, uh, that way. Yeah. You don't mind being judged as an actor. Not at all. But you don't want to be judged as a person. Yeah, it scared me. I was really like, I didn't want to seem stupid. I, I had no control over like what was going to happen. I also had like a lot of anxiety as a kid that I've grown out of. So doing promotion is anxiety producing. And so part of, of because Charlie's Angels is a, is a big movie, you feel the obligation to promote it. Totally. And I want to. I, but, I really like the movie. I want I want people to see it. But to go on Saturday Night Live. That was scary. That's yeah. scared. The first time you did it, I loved the opening monologue. You Thanks. came out and you showed all of the tweets or some of the tweets that President Trump had made about you. And it was hysterical. It was the best monologue because you came out and I thought this honesty was great, <laughs> you know, because so many actors and things won't talk about what's going on in their personal life. And this mm. and it was so fabulous because Trump was consumed with the fact that you and Rob Pattinson had broken up. Sure. And he yes. started tweeting against you saying, hey, Rob, you can do much better than Kristen Stewart. Forget her. Yes, yes. I had defied. You, can, I had, you could fuck tons of girls, basically, is what I he was saying. I had defied, like, his man. He was like, what? You... <laughs> He was like, this measly <laughs> lady has, <laughs> has, yeah, no, no, no. I was How fucking weird absurd. is it that the president of the United States is saying, hey, Rob, Kristen Stewart, forget over her, man. She's no good. I mean, and then you commented it on Saturday Night Live. I thought that was fucking terrific. You would think that he had, um, you know, more, more important, important things to things, do. Yeah. yeah, it's it's absurd when the and president very embarrassing United, for him. When the president of the United States is going after you and basically saying, hey, you know what, you're not so hot. 
Yeah, sure. Which is what he's saying. He's judging you. I'm literally going to like gag right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, He's like, hey, uh, you know, he's like, hey, you know what? I wouldn't fuck her. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm literally going to, I have to like not be a human anymore. (laughs) (laughs) You you don't want to go to bed with President Trump? You don't think that would be good for your career? What's worse? What's worse? People like actually having to fuck him (laughs) or everyone for the rest of your life thinks that you did. Oh, Oh. I cannot imagine. I honestly, I'm like, what would be worse? fucking that guy <laughs> or having people be like <gasps> like she fucked Donald Trump like, well you know Donald don't thinks know he's worse. the catch of the century oh honestly. I know you know he yeah, uh, yeah. and I think he was very sincere I think you know that's um that's what's so weird I think he was very sincere that Rob don't worry about it you're gonna do much better than Kristen oh Stewart. he was Get very over, oh, stop he, moping around he believes in the things that he well I don't I can't finish that sentence uh, I know sometimes those things seemingly reflect what he thinks. I don't, yeah, it's ridiculous. It must be surreal for you to have that happen, though. But it was great that you addressed <laughs> yeah. it. Did you ever talk to Rob about it? Did you ever say, can you believe the president of the United States is carrying, yeah, carrying on way. about our relationship? Yeah, well, we got back together. Like, we, like, went through a thing, and it fucking sucked. But, like, we really wanted to, like, be together. And right. so, yeah, I was like... I can't. Yeah, I don't remember that particular conversation, but we definitely were talking about everything in that time. That's yeah. kind of an exciting conversation, actually. <laughs> like, in on the one hand, it's disgusting, and on the other hand, it's like, oh my god, can you believe we're that focused on? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. Maybe that you need a little already... more time. <laughs> yeah, I still, yeah. I, need, I, yeah, I still need a little more separation from that. Yeah, yeah that's that's pretty intense. Yeah. Well, that was the thing that was so amazing to me was that. You know, all the Twilight fans were so invested in your relationship as well. Yes, yes, they it's were. It's too much. Oh, it is. It's too yeah. much. It is. Do stories. Bo- we like watching stories, you know? you know. And everyone, it's like a choose your own adventure story, too, is like what you believe. I had people genuinely asking me, like, if that relationship was real or fake. And I was oh, like, like the movies uh, p- f- um, fabricated a thing right. for publicity. Yeah. <laughs> well, they did used to do that in the old days. <laughs> I know. It's such a weird, like, studio system, like, old school way of thing. It's like, you really think at this point after all these years, like, that I am, like, that's how I live my life? There's no way a relationship could survive the types of scrutiny that you guys had. Really, I have. We were never- also just so young. You know what I mean? Like, there are stages life is long like it yeah was there a point you would have gotten married do you think i don't know i wonder <laughs> imagine i wanted to yeah no i mean like i think i've never if he been proposed in any... you would have been you would have gotten married i don't know I think i'm not like yes. a super duper traditionalist but at the same time i like I, yeah everything i've ever every relationship i've ever been in i thought that this was it. it i've never like casually I mean, maybe one or two. Do okay, I'm not giving everyone that do, but like, I've never really been the most casual person, you know. Do you think you'll get married one day? Yeah, for so sure. That appeals to you? Uh, like it never did. And yes, absolutely. Now it does. Yeah, absolutely. And in no way that's tied to like any weird sort of convention. It's more just like, I, when you know, you know, you know what I mean? But why do the traditional thing and get married? I'll tell you why I did. Yeah. I, I recommend marriage. Mm-hmm. I think it says to people, this is the person I hold above all others. That's how I feel too. And I want to announce that to the world. There is nothing like feeling sure about anything because we don't know anything. That's and right. that is the only thing you can feel like you know is that if you're in love with someone. And it elevates, I don't know what it is about that tradition. It elevates the relationship beyond what you could have imagined. I completely agree with you. It's romantic. Yeah. And it says, I don't care about like who I, it's being recognized, but not in a way that's like, I don't feel like I'm kowtowing to a sort of patriarchal standard. I don't, fit, but I do feel like I want to uh, like that honoring that and, and having other people recognize it. Fuck the government, but just people and your friends yes. and your family. That means a lot to me. Yes. I was hung up on the way people treated my wife when she wasn't my wife. Yeah. I didn't like it. Yeah. They, they were like, oh, she's going to be the uh, bimbo of the week or something. Right, right, right. No. no, I want to be on a team. And yes. I want the team to have a name. <laughs> I, I want to like, yeah. And for everyone to feel equal in the relationship. Completely. Yes. How not? This is beautiful. I like what you're saying. He's a mess. Yeah. He's such a romantic. I yeah. am a romantic. Yeah. You know, you look at me, you think, oh God, how's this guy a romantic? Yeah. I mean, it's just, but, but it's true. When you did Saturday Night Live the first time, mm-hmm. the big thing was all in rehearsal, you were cursing up a storm like a sailor. Yes. Fuck this. Fuck it. You were nervous. So you start to, you don't. I was embarrassed. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. You were embarrassed. It's so embarrassing. Sketch comedy is fucking ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? 
I, it's so not what I do. Like literally watching those people do that is, it is, it is baffling. They are genius. Like they're, it's, it's they're brilliant. A, it. Yeah, they're brilliant. Kate and McKinnon, it, fabulous, right? I am like floored by that. I'm literally floored by that person. Insanely uh, talented. It, it's weird. It yeah. is weird. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's, and, it's sick. And it's a unique talent. Yeah. She can't do, but what you do, first of all, if you weren't born with that face, this is the other thing that's got to freak you out. You got to have, there's only certain women that have the look and only certain men who have the look to be leading actors and actresses. Yeah. yeah I figure out something else, but yeah, I mean, thank it's got to be really a bunch sweet. of things. It's got to be a bunch of things. I mean, you got to have a certain look. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? You drinking bad water? No, I'm just trying to link. No. Why? You feel it? You'll jinx it? Does it feel funny for me to say that to you? No, I just don't want to sound like an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah. No, you got the look. <laughs> when do you know you have the look? I guess when you do, when you, I guess after Twilight and you're the leading lady, I guess you know. I was, I was genuinely such a sort of like, um, uh, weird, not like popular, not, um, classic. Like I wasn't like traditionally, my best friend was a cheerleader and I felt like a fucking troll. Right. And, um, for a long time. Uh, so, I like, I think like when I, you know, I think when I turned like 16 or 17 and like the guy that I had a huge crush on liked me back, um, I couldn't even believe it. Do you know what I mean? I was like, that's weird. I don't understand why, why you like, why does me? someone like me? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, uh, um, I'm super lucky that I get to do movies where it, you know, I get to do love stories, but if I didn't have that, I, you know, I. So it's fair to say that Saturday Night Live is a very uncomfortable situation for you. But your greatest comfort must be when they do those film little bits. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that I could tell yeah. you were comfortable. Yeah. But you're saying when you come out, especially when you come out to do the monologue. That's the easiest part for me. Oh, it is? Yeah. But that's when I think it would be the worst because you got to come out as you. You're not playing a character at all. And yeah. you got to sit there and talk about something going on in your life. Well, I'm not a sketch comedian. Um, right. So like if it was a sort of like improv or like a sort of um, if it was like a um, like a dramatic workshop or a sort of exercise situation that was broadcast, I would go. I would be fine with that. Um, I'm not f I I'm not. Yeah. Um, going out and shooting the shit with an audience and being like, I put no pressure on myself for that. Like, it's not my job to like be hilarious and i don't think anyone really expects that i think like the coolest thing to do is just go people say and your, kick it your friends say you're funny they say that the charlie's angels character kind of most reflects who you are in real life yeah yeah totally but right. sketch comedy is like outlandish you know what i mean like it's like i don't have like i don't i don't do a bunch of impressions and you know i mean maybe i could get a little better at it in time but it's not like my f default setting you know do you go who, who tells you what to wear when you come out because that was a very provocative outfit. I liked it. Thank you. The sexy. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, That's what I was going for. Bra. You were, though, weren't you? Fuck yeah. Yeah, you're wearing a bra, <laughs> but I'm seeing the bra. Mm. You're showing some skin. Mm. The skirt was kind of tight. Mm -hmm. You like that. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, you I like good. women. <laughs> yeah, you look good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, but who helps yeah. you with that? Do you have a stylist? I have a stylist that I've been working with since I was like 14. Wow. Yeah. So we really know each other. We have, we like, yeah. And what about Coldplay? Do you hang out with them at all uh, when you're, when you're doing Saturday Night Live or is it just, it's a crazy schedule, right? It's a tremendous time commitment. You've got to be there a couple of times during the week for rehearsal, right? I mean, it's a you're full. There, you're honestly one Monday, when Monday starts, that's it until, until Saturday at one o'clock in the morning, you're. Are you you're in the, are you in the writer's room when they're writing these sketches? Do you, you can be if you, if. I, I'm I'm more hands off because I I feel like as soon as I start having something to do with I don't even even writing things or being too um, in the developmental process of filmmaking starts to sort of take me out of it as an actor. I need to sort of believe it in a way that like feels I don't know like if I make it up I don't believe it. Um, I see. Anyway, but and also it's not what I do, and I think that for me to sort of try and say like, hey, do you think you could incorporate this sort of half baked idea into your writing? Right. Because you do this all the time, and how annoying that must be to have some fucking asshole actor come in and be but like, is that an asshole? What hey, if I'm, you did? What if you don't? They have ask to do you to. They want you to. But I was like, you do your thing, and I'll just like kind of but, follow but, your lead. But let me alleviate some of your pressure in life. If you do a particularly good impression, like maybe you do impressions. I don't know. Maybe you. I don't know that about you, but maybe you do. Mm. 
Why not go to the writers and say on Saturday Night Live, listen, I do a great impression of Ariana Grande, and sure. it would be really funny if I did that. Why not? Why not insert yourself into the process? Because I probably have, like, an inferiority complex about having a superiority complex, and I'm overly self-conscious, <laughs> wow. and I have a huge ego. Oh, my God. Oh <laughs> my, my ego's God. like, bah! And then I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> Would you clear up a rumor for me about you? Yeah. It, it was some story where uh, Harvey Weinstein of all people was, mm. was, was, had a charity thing. Yes. And there was some, I don't know, this Sheikh or Saudi Arabian prince yep. who said, I will give $500,000 Harvey to your charity. Mm. If you get me 15 minutes alone with Kristen Stewart. That sounds terrifying. And that happened. It happened. Yeah. Did you go through with it to raise money for the charity? Unbeknownst to me, um, this occurred. I had sort of been sidestepping this person for a while uh in other ways like I, th I i can't remember how but like this was some like i knew about this person i was like no 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 because it wasn't at first it wasn't um a philanthropic thing at all right in other words someone was trying to get a hold of you yeah he, he, he would do anything he would pay me yeah exactly pay right. anyone anything in order to just like kick it with me for a second and so um Har and probably in his mind he's thinking if you just met me for 15 minutes oh yeah you'll be in love I'm maybe sure. this will be it this will be it yeah. you will run off with him yeah i wonder what his thought process was i really don't right. know you try to keep that out of your mind <laughs> yeah, <Right. laughs> exactly yeah but um uh so i it, i went to this fundraiser that i was invited to and he was there and the i guy. was like oh i've just been fully harpooned Mm. and it's fine i'm like i was ultimately it was well-intentioned but it was um it was definitely uh a lie it was it was like i was uh i was coerced into a, a really good thing if he had just told me i probably would be like okay fuck it yes that will raise a lot of money for this thing i'm down i'll come see him as long as there's like people around and i'll like shake his hand and be like da 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 totally bye right but just to, but to do that to someone and not tell them is like <laughs> you know. so the meeting so it's really like a something's harvey a harvey weinstein, weinstein yeah, 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 exactly. it sure is. yeah what so yeah. so so you had the 15 minutes with this guy i guess you made good on it uh you were alone i in, walked into a room and he was there and he was there no oh, yeah and i, I was see. like oh my god yeah were you, wait, did you have security around you did oh, yeah you? always yeah oh yeah you did yeah it wasn't a dangerous or precarious it wasn't like a, a weird situation it was a very weird situation but it was not a threatening situation it was just like this is sort of wrong you could have gone about this in a different way you you psycho oh my god yeah wow yeah you see that's when you get used yeah, yeah. that was weird users mm. used for a good thing but yeah but yeah. no no it's no, a use it's fucked up, yeah. it's fucked up. <clears throat> yeah you must have a crazy life do you get proposed to a lot i mean do you have a lot of guys doing that kind of stuff where they're like hey come on just you know go yeah. out with me once no no mm -mm. i don't think i put that off Wow, Jesus. What was the conversation like, by the way? I, I, it, it, that would be a really fucked up movie. We actually married the guy. Oh, my God, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Was it a horrible conversation? I don't remember. I don't think we talked about much. No. Oh I think I was like, God. nice to meet you. Oh, my. Yeah, it was a flirt. Yeah, a yeah. Flirtation of sorts. I definitely was not flirting. No, no, not you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Oh, my God. What a That's life. But really, he didn't have anything to say? I don't remember. I think I was just like probably staring at Ruth and being like, oh Poor Ruth. my God, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen, you've lived a full life and you're only 29. Think yeah. about it. Think about what's going on. I wonder what the future will hold. I feel so crazy lucky. I've, I've been saying it a lot like recently. I feel like it must be a simulation and I am somewhere designing my little life. Like, yeah. It's going, it's going great. It's going great. Yeah. At the end of Saturday Night Live, you were jumping up and down. Was that relief? I yes. didn't see the end. Yeah. Was oh, that what yeah. it is? Oh, <laughs> yeah. you really hate it that much? No, I don't. No, no. Here's the thing. It's just scary. But I am such a, everything I do is scary. I put myself in like very high pressure situations and I thrive on it. I love it. But it's, but it's a lot. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it any other way. I, I, I mean, I, I would go back into it. Like it, Lauren said, like, you can totally come back if you want to. And I was like, I'll be back. And everyone's like, why would you do that so, to yourself? You, you're kind of, you have to really breathe your way through that. Like you're huffing through it. I'm like, yeah. Well, you know, I understand it. I do that with painting. I yeah. try to paint things that I'm not comfortable painting because yeah. I want to be able to do everything. Yeah. 
And in a way, you got to challenge yourself. You got to keep challenging yourself. What do you right? paint? Watercolor. Oh, cool. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'll see something and I go, I don't think I can draw that. Mm -hmm. And then I go and draw it because that's the way you get better. Yeah. I think. Oh, and my God. Absolutely. I don't want to say no to stuff. Like, I, it makes me feel bad about myself. I would rather fuck up at something rather than avoiding it and then feeling like I was Yeah, but a isn't pussy. it hard even deciding to do Charlie's Angels because, like, you got so much on the line now. You have so much success. Mm. When you fuck up, it's real. there's a big spotlight on it. So it's like probably the decisions are a little too tight. Like you just can't go off and do any film you want now. Yeah, I definitely um, was like pretty aware that if this didn't turn out good, that I would be like super bummed. But I've made a lot of bad movies. It's fine. Like I really, I don't mind. I know that By I- By bad movies, you feel the movie is bad, but your performance is good or, you, or you're critical of your own performance? Both. Both. Depending on individual. Yeah. I mean, What's the bad movie you made? So, oh my God, I made so many sort of What's like, a bad movie you made? I, I, I don't want to be mean to people. Be, be like mean people. to yourself. What's your worst performance? My worst performance? Yeah. Oh man. Okay, let me see. I, I look back at certain things and think that there were missed opportunities, like, um, or just times where I kind of, my body let, let me down. Um, I'm really embarrassed when I watch Adventureland and I love the movie and I love Greg Mottola and I love Jesse Eisenberg. He's one right. of my favorite people to work with and I, I want to do it forever. But I, there was, it was a certain time that I'm like, dude, but, and then people love that movie. And, and I, I guess if I can step outside of myself, it's fine. Let me see what else am I bad in. I don't think you were bad in Adventureland. No, no, I don't think I'm bad in it. There was just a few things where I was like, dude, you um, could have done them better. Yes, absolutely. I'm um, certain parts of twilight new moon. I totally screwed up the like devastating. I was so in love with Robin, so happy that I like couldn't imagine losing him. <laughs> yeah, right. And then I, and then like, but now I'm like, oh man, I could have really like done better work in that movie. And nudity, not a big deal to you. No, not You've at all. been nude in a lot of, uh, a lot of movies. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not like a mod. I'm not a, like, I'm not like a, a mod. I was going to call myself not prude. Like I'm like some sort of no, like no. raging like, the, slut. The first time you do a movie and they say, <laughs> okay, you got to show your titties. For lack yeah. of a better word. No, I want people to like really appreciate like, no, I like living openly. I, right. I, I have nothing to hide. Let me put it that way. Like right. I, I want to bear myself for sure. I admire you. Um, yeah. Look at what's going on with you. Very admirable. I think it's been kind of a reaction to being such a shy weirdo as a kid. I just went like, if I, it's all or nothing, you know? No, you're doing great. Yeah. Well, after Twilight, you did a lot of independent films, and smaller films. Was that by choice or, you know, because you could have gone just and made blockbusters? Yeah, um, there aren't very many good, viable blockbuster mm -hmm. options. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? No. So, yeah, I just want to make good stuff if it's big or small. That, or... that movie, uh, the fuck was it? The the one with um, Charlize Theron. Um... Uh, Snow White. And Snow White. Huntsman. That fucking movie made like a half a billion dollars. Did really well, yeah. And then they didn't ask you to be in the sequel. Um, we lived in a different time then, you know what I mean? I feel like now, like the slut shaming that went down was like so absurd. And the they should have put me in that movie. It would have been better oh, not oh. to be a dick, but. Uh, you're, you're saying there was slut shaming of you in that? Well, they didn't put me in that movie because like I went through a, a you know, oh, a highly scandal. publicized scandal. And so they were like the scared direct. of touching. Yeah, they were oh, scared of touching that. That's again. why they didn't have you in the sequel. That was mm. a dumb move. I think so. They didn't have you in this. Isn't that wrong, though? The not to put you in a sequel because you fell in love with the director? Well, I, I wouldn't mean, say that I fell in love with the director. Oh, well, but you had I an mean, affair. Yeah, it was, a weird, yeah, it was kind of a weird thing. But right. I definitely um, think that that movie, I, uh, it wasn't that big of a deal. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like literally wasn't. No, because like, I've actually forgotten about that. Yeah. Like I, and people so, at the time think it's a big deal. The work is so, so much more important. It's like, what do you care about? I, I just thought that that movie actually, we could have made a great second one and we could have done it in a functional and healthy way. Um, and then we didn't ultimately do that. And that's okay. Cause I did other stuff and it's fine. But yeah, that was weird. So you were blamed for the, you not being in the second movie just because you, you had sex with somebody. That's what you're telling me. I did not fuck him. Oh, you didn't fuck him. Okay. Well, well, that's this, even this worse. Is the most candid interview. <laughs> Ruth's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, take it easy. She just had a heart attack. No, but oh, you didn't fuck that no, guy. No, I didn't even fuck that Oh, guy. so why, then, then why not clear that up? Why not say that? Well, who's going to believe? I, it I doesn't believe even matter. You. I'm honestly, I feel like you do. And I actually feel like this is the most honest setting I've ever been involved with. You have been so honest through this. I mm. believe you. So, so why did you get pegged as fucking? You were dating. Because well, it looks like, you know, you like make out with a dude in public. It definitely looks like you did. Uh, 
Oh, oh. So you know. it was an innocent sort of thing. The, the the media made it out to be a big deal. Yeah, I mean, look, it wasn't innocent. That was like, a, yeah, it, you know, it was, that was a really hard period of my life. You're like, you know, that, I was like really young and like... Um, well, it's understandable. You're a young woman. Yes, okay, you were going out with Rob. Yeah, I didn't really know how to really... deal with that. I made some mistakes. Hey, guess but, what? Everybody does. Yeah, exactly. Right. And honestly, it's no one's business. And people get over shit like that. You know what I mean? It's like, it really is not a big deal. And basically what I'm saying is like the work to me genuinely was like um, ignored in a really sort of frivolous, like silly, petty way for a, for a group of adult people who are like supposed to be running studios and making films. That's what you're, I, I mean, honestly, like the, the film industry in Hollywood is so fear-based and it's so like, there are equations that lead people to massive decisions that you assume are creative that are not at all. Yes. And, and so like that didn't fit in their equation. That's and I think I they're say. idiots because if you take a little risk and you make something good, people will watch it and like it and pay you. That's why I said you were brave in the beginning because you, you're brave about your relationship with your girlfriend. And mm. because I know even being photographed smoking a joint, can actually keep you off a movie, even this day and age. So, yeah. you know, any of this stuff. Well, listen, you've said a lot. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ruth. Ruth. Yeah. She quit. She uh, doesn't want to work with you. <laughs> Ruth, I love you, man. <laughs> uh, look. <laughs> you Kristen, put me here. You put me on Howard's <laughs> yeah, yeah, you what think it's going to happen? How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Kristen Stewart is in Charlie's Angels. What she's really here to say is, look, she wants you to see the movie. You're That's proud right. of the movie. Charlie's Angels is sexy, right? Yeah. I mean, oh, it's yeah. hot it's chicks fun, it's running badass. around killing dudes. Yeah. No, yeah, these bitches are taking it back. Yeah. Are yeah. they taking it back? Absolutely. I mean, the, the movie's about, like, a network of women across the globe that have, yeah. like, connected. I always thought there was one Bosley. You're saying in this film, shockingly, there are multiple Bosleys. Yeah, and multiple teams and networks and just, like, fully connected. Like, anyone who's, like, really slaughtering, like, any any woman in power in our movie, probably an angel. Like, we're all together. We're, to, like, power in numbers is, like, a real warm, fuzzy feeling. And um, You like the message. I do. The whole message is that, like, Charlie isn't even a real, I mean, like, he started the company years ago, but, like, he doesn't, Charlie's a movement in our movie. It's not, it's oh, not like a like man a who owns a company women. and owns a bunch of women that he sends off to go do his bidding. We run the company and it's a. The angels up. run the company. Yes. That's the difference. Yeah. Did you kick ass with karate? Yeah. Do you know how to do karate for real? Um, no, but I can fake it really well. Like how? I can do a tornado kick. And who, what do you train for? And, and when you hold a gun, have you ch done some training with guns? A little bit. That was less into those kind of screw it, me up a little bit. But isn't that an important lesson? I mean, Keanu Reeves, when he plays um, uh, John, John Wick, Wick it, this kid knows what he's doing. Yeah. We were really responsible. Like we didn't like ri there were every bullet is accounted for in our movie. Like we're not like mean? shoot him. Like we're not just like, oh, there's a bunch of people over there. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You mean it's you like, try to look you before use, you shoot. If you use your firearm, yeah. it is like, oh, shit like they're they're you know they're you know in other uh, words it's not uh, we're not killing goons like they're not nameless goons we know you know what i mean like yeah yeah you're trying to kill actual people in the movie and and have some uh gravitas behind killing them they need to be stopped they're they're right. they're they're, they're posing bad. a threat and they need to be taken out how for long everyone's a shoot, how long a shoot is charlie's angels uh we were there for um four months i think no kidding was it where do you shoot somewhere warm uh, we were in Berlin. Oh, not yeah. warm. That a fucked up place. <laughs> uh, I makes love me nervous. Berlin. I yeah. Well, yeah. that makes sense. Well, look at me. It's weird. <laughs> it's definitely like a. It's eerie, but I I love that city. It's just not where you want to like flounce around in like small outfits. I was like, really, Eastern Europe? Like, come on. Why? Man. Because these guys will hit on you, and uh... it's cold. <laughs> oh, that's why. It's yeah. It's like you know the the idea of Charlie's Angels. Like I think like convertibles and like sunshine and beaches, and we did not do yeah, that. Yeah, you must be miserable because what I get from watching you in the paparazzi, you like wearing uh you know warm cl uh, clothes in hot weather. Yeah, fair to say. Yeah, yeah. I, it totally depends. Like my style is all over the map. Like sometimes I look like uh, like a. Yeah, sometimes I put on like baggy yeah. shit, and then sometimes I like want to wear. My like, wife shorts. lived in Berlin and loved it. It's cool. She thinks it was great. Yeah. It's but, very liberated. <laughs> yeah. When they tell you Berlin, though, I'd be like, oh, fuck, can't we just shoot somewhere warm? Yes. That's what I thought. I was like, yeah. are you serious? Charlie's Angels in Berlin? Yeah. I mean, what? it's cool. It's sexy. You should be in the Bahamas in bikinis. Agreed. But that's kind Thank of you. obvious. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> What's going on in the Bahamas? Not much. What's going on is warm weather and you know, all kind of things. <laughs> but if you want intrigue, you go to Berlin. It's Listen, true. <laughs> I like what you've said today. Thank you. You've been raw. You've been honest. You went out and you, you tackled a lot of topics. Yeah. So many, I don't know what the hell. I don't even know how to sum up. <laughs> is there anything to sum up, Robin? Have you learned I anything? I think we've got it all. I think yeah. we got it. Yeah. Um, and I expect you to be married soon. Are you in love right now? Yeah. You are? Like, like, yeah. I mean, the answer is yes. Will you propose? Absolutely. When? I can't fucking wait. Really? Yeah, I this don't know. This is big. I, yeah, I want to be like sort of somewhat reasonable about it, but I think like good things happen fast and yeah. Propose. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a yeah, yeah. I mean, like, look. What let will me, you let say? me put it this way: Will you get down on one knee in traditional uh, pro- uh, proposition? No, I can't say right now because she'll find out. She's listening. <laughs> Probably not, but I feel like that might get back there, it and that would be a back. really bad yeah. idea. Have you told her you want to marry her? Mm-hmm. You have. I also know exact. I have a couple plans that are like the just the coolest things to do. That like I don't think it'd be. It's pretty undeniable. Yeah. I fucked mine up. Really? How did you do it? This is this. I'm embarrassed to tell you because you're going to think I'm an asshole. But I can tell you're not an asshole. I got naked <laughs> and I asked Beth to get naked. Now, why did I do that? <laughs> what the fuck was I doing? <laughs> Where at were least you? they were in the house. In a, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we were, we were at the gym. No, 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 no. I mean, we were in, and I said, I want to tell you something, and I think we should be naked when we do it. And I, I mean, imagine oh. what I look like naked. That's. I'm surprised I didn't get a flat out no. <laughs> All I'm saying is don't be naked when you do it. Mm. I saw a romantic thing the other day. I'm in a restaurant with, uh, with Jimmy. Jimmy, and, uh, Jimmy Kimmel and his wife Molly. Mm-hmm. We're sitting there in Brooklyn. And uh, a guy just got down on his knee at the restaurant. Wow. And he proposed. And right in front of us. Yeah. And it was very romantic. Traditional, yeah. but romantic. Yeah. Maybe that's what you should do. I'm I'm really impulsive. Like I don't know when that's going to be, but the first time I told her that I loved her, we were like sitting in this random bar. It had only been like I have like I've known her for like six years, but we started like seeing each other. It was like two weeks in, but it was like it was literally like the day that I met her. It was it, like all bets were off. You mean you were friends for a while, like for I many met years? Her, I met her years ago on a movie, and I hadn't seen her in six years. And then she like rocked up at a friend's birthday party, and I was like where have you been and how have I not known you? She's been like living in LA it alongside my life somehow, <laughs> but not ever converging. And so, yeah, the first time I told her I loved her, I was just like, it was like really late and we were in some like shitty bar and her friends were there or whatever. And they like walked out and I was just like, oh man, I'm so fucking in love with you. Like done. Just like that. And yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a thing. And it also was like so obvious. Like it just Isn't is. That hot? Yeah, it's sick. I'm sure that that's how it'll happen. Although I do have like a really good idea. We're both from LA and we like really love LA. And we're both like, we're both kind of like scumbags. Like we both felt like trolls as kids. We're like so similar, but different. She's a writer. She's brilliant. Like, um, but I, I have this like really cool thing that I'm going to do that I want to tell you, but I just can't. Oh, you got to tell me. Well, I just propo- re-proposed to my wife on uh, Jimmy's show and they got remarried on Ellen. I Wait. mean, talk about uh, Borwin. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. You got remarried on Ellen? I was Ellen? on Jimmy's show and I, my, I've, I've proposed to my wife many times. I said, let's get remarried. She goes, no, it's fucked up. It, 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 people <laughs> always end up getting divorced after that. Mm. So I said to Jim, I go, I go on vacation with Jimmy. I said, watch me propose to Beth and I'll get down on my knee and I'll propose. And she'll go, no, in front of all of our friends. <laughs> so I went on a show and I thought she, it'd be funny to watch her say no to me. And instead she said, yes. Of course. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's pretty romantic. It's really sweet. Is that what you're planning more romantic than that? I don't think oh, so. Oh, yeah. Why don't you come on this show and propose? That would be great for me. I don't yeah. know. You. <laughs> I mean, how awesome would that be? <laughs> I really need that from you. Um, mine is a. It's just diff, I've got a different idea. But. With a ring. Yeah, the idea for that is actually it's, it's super wrapped up in what I'm. Yeah. Do you he's have a ring? Trying to get. No, I know. No. I know. He's he's no. worming his way around. He is. Yeah. Don't he's do really something good at lame this. like a cigar band. The ring. No, 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 no. pulling off. A, it's a jack in the box or a thing. Cracker it's, jack ring. No you way. should run this by me. I mean, as soon as we are off the air, I will tell you exactly what it is. It's really cool. Really? Yeah, I have two things that I like. I've, I've even told her, like, God, there's two things I won't be able to tell you until I can tell you. And she's like, what? So uh, you might as well do it already. You've basically told her you're going to marry her. Totally. But, like, I want to, like, luxuriate in this shit. I want to, like, I don't want to rush. I want to, like. Romance. Yeah, I want to draw it out. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're doing it right. Yeah. 
I feel like that. I feel, yeah, I feel like that. No, listen, I wish you luck with that. Thanks. I'm a big proponent of this. I think Thanks. it's time to get married. <laughs> it's time to just profess your love. Yeah. And time to tell the world, this is my wife. Oh, whatever it is. I mean, I completely agree with you. I want to make like movies and kids with this girl. And that's like, I can't believe I'm so like, I literally like drew her in a dream and then she like now exists. It's she's fucking, a writer. Yeah. She's a brilliant screenwriter. What has she like, written? Like, Do I know even her work? Um, she's just now getting, she literally, she's like, uh, just now getting like a few of her things like greenlit and she has a stack of scripts in her apartment, wow. like th three of which I want to do. She younger that's or just, older than you at the same age. She's a couple years older than couple me. Years older. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to have kids, huh? I want to have a family for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I, she said this like sick, amazing thing that I was like, God, you're right. You know, when you hear stories about somebody who, um, uh, that you're, if somebody that you're in love with tells you that they had like a bad time as a kid, right? Her childhood wasn't like the easiest and we all like go through some weird stuff and, and you want to go like, Oh, I wish I could like time travel and protect you. Yes. The reason you have kids is because you like can complete that that impulse you go like well Hopefully. i guess yeah i guess we got to make a kid that i can feel like is you so i can protect it well you have a prenup I can't time travel you have to have a prenup i hate to bring in reality to this whole beautiful fantasy i never fantasy. considered that but she is literally like you have to do it i feel you i mean sure i i, I wouldn't i am t i'm i, I literally know <laughs> like, you see listen <laughs> listen to me yeah maybe she goes crazy it, this person no, she won't go crazy. And yeah. she, the conversation will be, she, if she's the right woman, which I believe she is. Yeah. Because I know her so well. <laughs> you would really like her. She's funny. Well, I think, why not? Listen, you're sitting on a stash of cash. That's sure. unbelievable. We got to, we got to, we, listen, we got to let some reality into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I never thought about that, but, but sure. Um, <laughs> now yeah. she's nervous. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And I'm like, oh, marriage. Oh, man. Um, mm, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. totally. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, look. I think she would literally like, mm, no, I mean, yeah, money. She's definitely like, she's got, she's got good values, you know, she knows what's not important. to say you're not willing to share. I mean, you're going to, it's going to be a life together. You're going to live together. You're gonna... I want to give her a literally like providing things for her. I, I love like, like if, she, if she's not hungry, I'm like, maybe you're kind of hungry. Maybe you want a bagel or something, right? <laughs> you want to know something? I'm <laughs> like giving her shit is, I can't tell you how happy it makes me. You are in love. Yeah. I've I never know. seen you like this. And I just met you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unbelievable. You yeah. want to scream it from the hilltops. Yeah. You're like in Titanic. <laughs> with Le You're like Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. To be honest, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Listen. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's cool. <clears throat> I've kept you here for 17 hours. Like Chinese water torture. <laughs> Kristen Stewart is here to tell us that Charlie's Angels is opening November 15th in theaters everywhere. You're pretty remarkable. I love everything you said. And I'm on the same page with you. I feel that. I'm glad I met you. I'm so happy that I did this because I grew up with you and this is such a trip. Well, like, thank you. I'm a, I'm a big yeah. fan. I'm so, an admirer. Same. Likewise. My dad. Oh, I have to just. Um, yes. I have to give one shout out to my best friend's mom, Patty. Patty, go ahead. She listens to it every single day. And what's her I love story? Um, she's my, she, she created my favorite person that I'm not in love with, but right. that is my absolute favorite person. So she's my best friend and, um, uh, she did a good job. Susie's like a fucking magic unicorn light. You got any famous friends or is, are they most just, uh, people who are not in show business? Uh, both. Yeah, both. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. this, yeah. I'm talking about the people close to you. Who's your closest famous friend? Um, Emma Roberts is one of my best oh, friends. She lives, deal. yeah. Look, she just moved into my, well, just moved mm. into my neighborhood. She's like, she's one of my very closest friends. I might have to but hang with you kids. You, Emma, maybe I'll hang out with you guys. Yeah, that'd be fun. We'll yeah. Do you get together at six? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah what time do you guys eat dinner? <laughs> Am I eating at four <laughs> thirty? Sorry, I'm old. Uh, I'll eat all day. I aged out. Uh, Kristen Stewart. The movie is Charlie's Angels. I'm excited about Charlie's Angels. Always was a big fan of Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Always liked it. So, liked all the movies liked and the, movies. the TV show. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, all good. Opening November 15th in theaters everywhere. And uh, thank you for coming in today. Dude, thank you. This was fun. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Was it fun? It wasn't horrible? 
No, this is great. Honestly, oh. I would love if, if all press was just actual honest, like bare. I loved t- like taking it all off. <laughs> I so hate glad. like peddling an idea that's bullshit. Yeah. That feels weird to me. And I some love- pe- that's some people. That's all they want. And you're like, stop trying to make me do that. I love when people say to me they had a good time because, yeah. you know, I, I know that sometimes it can be drudgery just getting up in the morning and doing promotion and things. But trust me, really this good. morning I was like, oh, my fucking God, an hour talking about this stuff. Oh, really? Like, were yeah. you? You were I dreading was, it? Yes, and I now was. now you feel good about it. I feel great. You I'm feel like. Energized. I'm, you, you are sending me off into a press day that would otherwise be like pretty wearing and I'm what I'm, else do you have to do uh, blow it off what do you have to do <laughs> what's so important I have to go talk to the Hollywood foreign press oh yeah you have to, you have to kiss their ass for sure they're Just, sweet people yeah and there's a big market there and they have the other yeah, they, I, oh, sure. That's not so bad. Yeah, okay. I think it's just sort of customary. It's also something I'm completely used to. I've been talking to them since I was a little kid, so it's sort of like, hey right. guys, you know um, them all, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we promote our movie today. Like we, me and the girls go on television for five minute periods or four minute periods. And so at we least say, you'll be with them. That'll be fun. Yeah, for the you first like half, I'm alone, which blows. They're the best. They're Who's the, in the movie sweetest with you? girls. We didn't even mention their names. Ella Balinska, and Naomi Scott. Um, are they any good as actors or are you were you disappointed in their performance? <laughs> Thank God they were both incredible. What the fuck do you do if you get on a set and the other actors blow? Has oh, that happened man. to you? Yes. Oh, you vey. Oh, it's horrible. What they make do you, do? you worse. You're like, God, you're making me look bad. Um, Listen, in no. private parts, I got to be with Paul Giamatti. Think He's about the that. shit. Mary he- McCormick. Dude, yeah. You act like you didn't act with me. <laughs> you were <laughs> like, <great>. hello. <laughs> we had a yeah, scene right together here. where uh, <laughs> I, I thought we'd get the Academy Award. You want an Academy Award? <laughs> Would you like an Academy Award? I want to be acknowledged for greatness for sure, but I'm definitely not like, I can't do that campaign thing. I cannot no. like vie for, I mean, and not to say that that's why everyone gets them, but there's a certain like sort of a uh, thing that you have to do in order to, and I, I'm, I, I have not done a performance that I find worthy of that yet. I when I do, to, yes. I will absolutely be like, I think I should do this now. Well, I, I said to Robert Downey Jr., I believe that he be, that he deserved an Academy Award for Tony Stark, at least the mm. nomination. I think he did a fantastic job. Mm. But because it was a comic movie, and he said, you know what? I didn't want to even go and campaign. I didn't want to do all that shit. You got to do it if you yeah. want it. Yeah. I'll help you out with that. As soon as I do something that I think is good enough, I'll do it. Come in here. We'll get you the Academy Award. Okay. And just mention me when, you, uh, <laughs> when you're up there and say Howard. Uh, anything Howard, all right? All right. Listen, mm-hmm. Kristen. They're telling me I've got to give you the heave ho. Okay. Because you've got so much publicity to do. Yeah, i got to go talk to more people. You I can't. feel like this is. I feel like today I'll just be like, you did I enough. kind of did. I said everything. If you want to just refer to the Right. My audience will go see Charlie's Angels. So you're there. Cool. Everyone will be there. That'll well, be it. Sick. We that's... like all that. There's people being killed. Which we love. We love on-screen violence, my audience. Okay. We love hot women. We yes, do. full of that. We love that. Mm-hmm. And that's it. But actually, that's what we love. And there we are. <laughs> and we are. Yeah. And you, 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 you provided that. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and, and shout out to Patty, mm. who made Susie. <laughs> I love that. Right. That's a very important thing. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The Howard Stern Show.